everybody, my name is Chelsea Nevy and today I'm going to talk about my sophomore year at Howard. Stay tuned. Okay, sophomore year. I continue, oh wait, ooh, whoops. Okay, so disclaimer. When I speak about my sophomore year, I am actually talking about my third year at Howard. So what had happened was, when I began my sophomore year, I got sick and I had to withdraw from all my classes. So <laughs> there's actually a list of W's on <laughs> like that semester. I just, I literally just didn't drop out on time. If Had I dropped out a little bit earlier, you wouldn't see the W's, whatever, it doesn't matter. But I dropped out because I was sick. And when I came back, I just kind of took like, I don't want to say not nonsense courses but I tried to take courses that some of which fulfilled like certain requirements for my degree others did not I think one of them did not I took courses that didn't that weren't like a part one and part two if you know what I mean because I wanted to be on track with everybody else so things like Gen Chem 1, Gen Chem 2, Bio 1, Bio 2 um so that was like my second year at Howard and then what I call my sophomore year at Howard is when I restarted with everybody else in the fall so sophomore year um, yes, I continued to do research at the same lab that I was doing research in before, uh, which was the drug addiction lab with Rexin. At this point, we actually started to branch into, what did we start doing? We started to branch into like anhedonia, schizophrenia. Well, anhedonia kind of led us to paths in schizophrenia and depression and it was really cool I really was getting into it when I was new in lab I was kind of just told to like I was kind of like just doing things I never really got my own project and I think that when you're when you're a yuppie in lab I think that's a little appropriate you know what I'm saying like then again I think different institutes institutions have more resources so they may be able to give out projects you know what I mean my PI made it clear that like there's just no resources there are no there are not enough resources for that so I was kind of helping her with her project so that was doing stuff like mounting brain slices slicing the brain doing sacrifices on the rats doing neurosurgery on like dead rats <laughs> that was my favorite part yes but yeah like I did a lot of like menial tasks and I don't mean to like downplay them because I was constantly asking like what is this about like I was still very involved in the research process that's what I'm trying to get across I was still very involved in the research process even though I didn't have my own project and it kind of felt like I was doing the bookends of her project my PI's project that's fine though sophomore year I started to do more like I guess intellectual work like she would ask me to present like kind of where the current literature is and I think that like now that I've had more research experience I think that was like our version of journal club there was it wasn't really a journal club but it was just kind of like she would she would constantly tell me like these are the questions that I have that pertain to our research like could you do more could you look into this type of method have they ever done this on like this type of method with this type of rat how do they do it could you answer this research question I would constantly come back with her with the come back to her with the answers and the sources and so that was fun I also found out about study abroad during this time so I quickly made plans to study abroad if you go to an HBCU there is a modest <laughs> super modest type or sorry scholarship that IES abroad will give you because I studied abroad through IES abroad they have a scholarship for HBCU students there are also other scholarships that people can apply for or apply to and yeah I found out about study abroad so I started to plan for that I was trying to go to the cheapest school that spoke English because my at my school your grades transferred so I didn't want to like go to a place that was speaking you know Italian or like Arabic and like not know what they were saying and fail because of it and then had that on my transcript. Uh, <laughs> also, that summer, I was looking into internships. So I don't know. I, I don't know how many internships I applied to. Clearly not enough. Like, same problem as with the undergraduate you know, application process. I did not apply to enough as far as I'm concerned. I, but I, no, that's not true. I applied to a decent amount, but like not enough to, I guess, have choices. If, I don't know. But anywho, I was planning on continuing to do research where I was. I also just was inspired to do a review of literature and I'm really really mad that I never followed through with it. There's that's something with me like I never really follow through on all my inspirations. <laughs> I'm, I'm better now but like I really 
really wish I had followed through with that review of literature. I had begun it. Like I was collecting so much resource, so much sources, excuse me, and reading them and everything because I had this had this grand idea that like a Rexin was like a huge player in schizophrenia, which is probably super misleading. But like whatever, I was I was down. I was down to like write this whole paper about it um, and submit it to whichever journal would hear me out. Um, and I think that that's a really great thing for like students to do. So again, if you guys don't know, Howard is not like a huge research facility like, you know, one of the Ivy Leagues or like one of the bigger state schools. Howard doesn't have a lot of research opportunities. So I think that if you're a student in a, in a school that doesn't have a lot of research opportunities or you just find yourself without a lab or without a summer internship, I think it would be so amazing if you wrote your own review of literature. Writing a review of literature is not a difficult thing thing in my opinion it's kind of like using the tools that you have from english class and applying it to science like you're just you know it, it, it's also like a great way of refreshing yourself and familiarizing yourself with the topic of research that interests you because when you write a review of literature you have to go through and scour all the literature that's on your subject and you know, write about it in an article. Now, I will say this. Reviews of literature are typically not things that journals look for. They typically only ask established professors in the field to submit reviews of literature. So it's not something that they just accept as a submission. It's usually something they ask specific people to do. But even still, there are other journals, probably like, I guess, lower impact journals that would allow, you know, I guess, a student, I'm, I'm assuming, I don't know, I just feel like it couldn't hurt to try and I would love to see students take that initiative because like it is there for you if you want it. Trust and belief. If you write, I personally think, if you write a review of literature that is quality, you know what I'm saying? And and it doesn't take a lot, you just need to know like English and and logic and rhetoric. Like, yeah, I don't know, like it doesn't take a lot to do. but. If you can write a quality review of literature and you submit to like at least 100 journals, one of them will take you. I believe that wholeheartedly. And maybe even get your PI on board, um, have them as like a second author or whatever, just so that you have more cred. And also so that they can see that you're doing a good product. I think that's just a great idea. Like I wish that was something that was advertised to students more because it would get us, I think it would get people more invested in doing research, get people more involved into what research is like and like get them more familiar with the field that they're interested in, even if they don't have access to that field. And it's a publication in the bank. So yeah. So so that was, I was planning on doing a review of literature about orexin and schizophrenia that summer, but then I ended up getting an internship at UCLA and I, so the way it happened was my orgo teacher was like, do you have an internship ready for the summer? And I was like, not officially yet, but it looks like I'm going to stay here for the summer, stay at Howard and stay in the lab I was in because I was interviewing for, I think I don't know if it was NIH sponsored, I don't know, but I was interviewing for an internship uh, that would allow me to stay at Howard and, and do research there. And he was like, no, 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 you need to go out and see other places. Okay. Uh, <laughs> how do I feel? Do you need to go to as many research institutions as possible or do you need to stay in one research lab, you know, kind of work up the ranks and like possibly get your own project and publication one day? I think it ultimately depends on the situation you're in. Seeing a different research lab, going to UCLA was so eye-opening because here I am at this little lab at Howard that could, you know what I'm saying? And during my stay, towards the end, we were trying to get this Western block to work, right? This was right before I went to UCLA. We were starting to do Western blocks. And so my lab was in the College of Medicine. Me and my lab partner would have to walk all the way, it's not that far, walk to the Howard Hospital, go into the cancer department, and go to Dr. I, I forget his name, Dr. So-and-so's lab within the cancer department to use his Western blot, to share his Western blot because we didn't have the resources to buy our own. Okay, clearly since we're sharing this Western blot with another lab, like we don't have unlimited access to it. Not to mention Western blots take a while, but like we don't have unlimited access to just keep running them every day to like perfect our crafts because other people have to use it. Okay. I go to UCLA and there's five Western blots on one bench. I was like, what? You know, like, so it, it was, it was really, you know, like, it was eye-opening. <laughs> it was 
really eye-opening because it's like, I can't be mad. Cause I, okay, I ended up publishing while I was there, right? That I basically ended up on a project that they, that they published. And I created some images from microscopy, I think, what was it, fluorescence? Fluorescent microscopy, I forget now. But I ended up, my work ended up getting published while I was at UCLA. And it was just so, Frustrating and fascinating, but more so frustrating, not fascinating, just frustrating. It was so frustrating to realize that like, when you don't have the resources, you know, and this is life, when you don't have the resources, you don't have access to kind of, I guess, move up the ladder, if you will, because a lot of people are like, oh, publications, like, first of all, you don't need a publication to get into an MD PhD program. Yes, it could help you if you're like a first author specifically. If you're a fifth author like I was, you know, I mean, at the end of the day, it was just a summer internship and I happened to be on the publication. Like, that's nice, but like, also not that deep. But if you have a lot of resources, then you're more likely, if you're in a lab like that, especially over time, to get a first author publication. If you're in a lab that is sharing, you know, Western Blot with another lab, like, publications will be a lot slower, and that's what I experienced. So yeah, it was really nice for me to see other institutions and see how they function, and I did have to take that into account when I was thinking about where to apply. Like, I want a place with resources. I want a place with five Western Blots on one bench. Like, sue me, you know? But at the same time, I think it's really, really important important to like because there's such a thing as like a science butterfly where you're just hopping from lab to lab topic to topic and that's kind of what happened to me but I think it's fair I mean I don't know like I think because the thing is when you're when you're in one lab you can kind of let a an idea fester and grow and you can really explore it in depth and when you go from lab to lab unless you are following the same topic or the same project then it's kind of like you only see the surface level of a lot of different my bad, um, my card was full, so. <laughs> Y'all don't know, it's like midnight right now. <laughs> Anywho, I was discussing, I was discussing floating around from lab to lab. Okay, um, I think you just kinda do whatever happens to happen to you. However, what I will say, Although when you stay in one lab, you have a greater potential of like having more autonomy, getting your own projects, and by extension of that, getting publications. I personally think that the one way it may work against you is when you're applying and you need letters of recommendation from people who you've done research with and you only have one letter. I don't know how places kind of take that because a lot of times they ask you they'll either say we want a letter of recommendation from every person you've done research with or we want a letter of rec from like two to three people you've done research with and then some may also say we want a letter of rec from people who who taught you science so i kind of feel like if you're supposed to give a letter of rec for like everybody you've done research with or two or three people that you've done research with and you can only give one letter then it's kind of like mm. It's not even like a mark against you because I understand that okay, you went to this one lab and you stayed there, but it's just you don't have enough letters to give. Of course, I'm pretty sure you could easily supplement it with like science letters. I'm just saying. Yeah. Plus, I, I personally liked when I went from lab to lab, seeing the different lab environments. Something I didn't realize until much later on uh, is that the culture, the personality types, and the people that are in a given lab can really make or break your time there. I've experienced two labs, two? Yes, two labs that I felt were toxic. I'm not gonna say, you know, this person's a bad person, that person's a bad person. One lab, I had like a really, really just bad experience. I felt like it was racism, yeah. And another lab, it was just kind of like, personality differences. For all I know, the other lab that I thought was racism, that could have also been personality differences, I doubt it, but definitely didn't help the fact that like I was the only black person there and nobody else was like the same race. And they weren't white, just for the record. It's not just like only white people from the South can be racist, like it can be anyone. <laughs> but yeah, so <sighs> listen, like I said, it's midnight. I don't know what happened and I'm just here to finish this video. <laughs> I'm just here to finish this video. That was my sophomore year. I feel like there's nothing else to add. Stay tuned. My next video will be about junior year. It won't be filmed at midnight. 
yeah comment tell me how your sophomore year went if you are a sophomore comment down below let me know how it's going comment let me know what your first summer internship was like comment if you think that it's better to stay in one lab versus hopping from lab to lab and or like seeing different research avenues because one thing i will say and I'll, you'll see this in a different video since because I hopped from lab to lab, I was able to get to know a lot of different techniques and that's how I fell in love with coding. So I don't regret that whatsoever at all. But yes, comment, like if you want to like, share if you want to share, subscribe if you want to subscribe, or if you don't want to subscribe, you should still subscribe. And <laughs> one of the things you're supposed to do, tweet me a question if you have a question. Or if you want to say hi, that's fine too. I have an Instagram, I think. Yeah, I do. Who knows if I'll ever post pictures on that. I, I feel like I will eventually, you know what I'm saying? But like, don't go there if you want like a beautifully curated, like, I don't think that's gonna happen anytime soon. <laughs> Whatever, y'all. Um, I think I'm done. I think I'm done. Okay, bye. <laughs>